Welcome back to another video. My name is Carl Gosling and today we're going to take a little look at sensor placement for your Oculus Rift CV1. Now, been out a little while, you might be wondering why I'm doing a video. There's been a resurgence in VR headset sales over the last few months. Oculus even re-released, refurbished CV1s directly from their website for, for people to buy because they were out of stock on the Rift S, which is technically its um, successor, and out of stock on the Oculus Quest, which is a standalone headset. And this, this trend you see across, the, across, the, across everything, um, the Valve Index is out of stock. You know, all the popular VR headsets, the good ones, the ones you'd actually want, completely out of stock. Now, I've had my CV1 for a while. I've had my sensors, my cameras, tracking cameras, in many different places. I've gone from a two sensor setup to a three sensor setup. I've had them mounted up in the corners of the ceilings. I've had them sat about sort of waist height, I've had one high, one low, all sorts of different configurations. So I thought as there's going to be a plethora of new users out there buying these refurbished ones directly from Oculus and also buying up second-hand ones, They're literally like gold dust these days. Uh, and the CV1 is still a great uh, VR headset by, even by today's standards. You know, it's not perfect, nothing is. Uh, and again, one of the biggest drawbacks is having external tracking cameras from an installation point of view from an overall experience point of view, the tracking is better than having inside-out tracking. But anyway, that's not for today's video. I've got a review on the CV1 if you want to check it out. That'll be in the end card at the end of this video. But today, I just wanted to talk about sensor placement. And the reason for that, aside from the fact that there's a lot more people you know, getting them these days, is that I recently moved house. Some of you would already know this. Um, but because of COVID-19, I've not had any carpet to put down in the house. Yeah, they were due to go down two days before we got locked down here in the UK. So we've kind of half moved in, but half not. There was no point unpacking and setting up a lot of our belongings, only to have to empty the rooms again, ready for when the carpets go down. So at the moment, my rift is set up here in the front room, uh, but that's not where it's going to stay. So rather than mounting the cameras up on the walls in the corners of the room, which is where I had them at my old house, I thought I'll just set them you know, around the room sort of as high as I can because from what I read, the higher the better from a being able to see you point of view. But without you know, doing anything too permanent because it is all going to be taken, um, you know, uninstalled and put in a different room, hopefully when we get carpets uh, in the near future. So having had the cameras set up in the corners of the room and now gone back to having them at sort of waist height, I just saw I'd comment on my experience with them. So first of all, let me show you where they are. I'm going to, have to take a little bit of a wander around the room. So I don't know whether my phone will keep me in focus or not, but it doesn't matter. I'll show you where they are and the distance they are apart. Now, the first one I'll show you, these should all just about be in shot, is over here to the left on top of one of my speakers. And that is just about waist height. I'm pretty much six foot. And then we come over this side of the room, the other one, is over here, that's ever so slightly higher because it's set on an amplifier on top of the same speaker. So they're very similar heights, about waist height. And then the final one, the third sensor, is down here on my subwoofer, um, which is probably just above, just above knee height down there. Uh, and of course the sofa is technically in its line of sight. I was wondering whether that would affect the sort of the tracking we get in this overall play space. Now, I don't know if you know how these cameras or, or sensors actually work. But they, in spite of the fact that the lens looks circular on the front, I believe they actually put out a rectangular, tapered sort of field of view like this. So if I'm the camera, my arms are representing the edge of its field of view. So top and bottom, side to side, that's going to give you uh, a rectangular shape that tapers out like a cone but obviously not conical, square. So this is how you need to picture, when you're looking at where you put these sensors, you need to imagine that shape coming out, and it's at quite an angle, it isn't, you know, it isn't like that, it's more like this, it's, I can't remember the exact degrees, but it's pretty wide, they're pretty wide angle. So that's what you need to picture, coming out both horizontal <laughs> and vertical out of each camera, and what you want is at all times, no matter where you are in the room, you want one of these three cameras 
to be able to see your headset and your hands. Whether you're shooting, whether you're ducked down, you know, whether you're doing a bloody barrel roll, whatever it might be, one of these cameras needs to be able to see you at all times to maintain good tracking, ideally two. And what I've found with these set up where they are now is that I've had zero tracking issues. Literally none, not one glitch. And that is no different, in my experience, to having them mounted up in the corner of the ceilings. I had the same configuration, two at the front, one at the back, but they were all mounted up in the corners of the ceilings looking down. Um, and, you know, if, if anything, having them mounted from above, obviously you angle the cameras, you don't have them flush with the ceiling. You angle them down to get the, the biggest field of view you can. But even from above, you would be able to occlude if you were to be bent over, maybe with your hands, you know, down here, controllers here, if you were bent over, you could occlude the cameras because they're coming from above using your body. If anything, I think, and it's only my personal experience, but having them at this sort of height makes it almost harder for them to be occluded because even if I was to, let's say I was to wander over here and I was to do what I just demonstrated over there, I was ducked down and my two controllers were here, I'm face on a camera, there's one right there looking at me and no matter how far down I go, I'm still gonna be in full view of that camera. So it might not be better than having them from above, but I certainly don't think it's any worse. And the advantages of this is you don't need to extend your cables as much. If you've got a fairly big play space, you might need active USB cables. None of mine are active. I'm just using three meter passive extension cables. They work flawlessly. So yeah, first advantage of this is you don't have to extend your cables too far. You don't need to spend out too much money on active cables. Second advantage is you don't have to have cameras physically fixed to the wall and run wires up the wall and potentially along the ceiling. From a neatness point of view, none of my wires can be seen here, even though this is a temporary setup. If I was to actually do this permanently, because there's one running across the floor there, if I was to do this permanently, I would put that in a round cylindrical white conduit and it would blend into the skirting board, you wouldn't know it was there. And so then all you have is your sensor sat atop a speaker with a couple of inches of wire at the back before it drops down behind the speaker and is out of sight. Same on the other side and the same down there for the one on the sub. So it actually makes installation that little bit neater, uh, in my opinion, because these wires are black um, and if they're coming down the, the wall or across the ceiling, they're very visible. Um, you know, if it's a, a games room or something, you probably don't care. But if, like a lot of us, it's in your front room, you've got a partner, a girlfriend, a wife, she might not like you running cables all around the room and having cameras stuck up in the corner. Now, I'm quite lucky, my girlfriend Katie, who you've all seen in other videos, she's into her games too, so she's not too adverse to the odd cable here or there. But, you know, this will all be... I still like to do things as neatly as I possibly can because I'm a very tidy person. So, yeah... Less, less extension cables, slightly neater installation, and so far, having been here now almost a couple of months, flawless tracking, no issues whatsoever. So this is with a three camera setup. Um, I also experimented prior to having my third camera with a two camera setup, which is what they come with out of the box. So I'll talk about that briefly, because again, if you've just bought one, there's a good chance you've only got two cameras, so this will be important to you. you obviously, you can't apply what I've just applied because you don't have a third camera. Now, I ran a two camera setup in a play space, probably very similar in size to what I have here from a camera point of view. There was more objects in the room making my actual sort of walking space a bit smaller. But as far as from the sofa forwards and from a camera positioning point of view, the camera was looking down, or the cameras were looking down on a similar play space. So what I did, this was advice I found online, I had one camera high up, it wasn't ceiling height, it's probably two feet down from my ceiling, so I would guess it was about seven foot high. I just happened to have some double doors that opened up, and so the door frame that ran above had a little hook in there, by pure coincidence, and I just cable tied the sensor to the hook and pointed it down, and it sat there perfectly, and I ran the cable along the door frame, down around the skirting board into the PC. So I had one just above head height, say about seven feet, and then the other one, was sat at probably, probably the same height as the one on the speaker over there. So again, as I say, just over 
just over waist, just over waist height. Maybe it, maybe it was a touch lower at the other gaff. But that's where I had them. And they were literally opposing. So one directly in front, one directly behind. And again, with their field of view that comes out from each one, that was enough to give me almost flawless tracking. Uh, I think I might have experienced one or two glitches where it might have lost the controllers for a second. Again, depending what game you're playing or what you're doing. A lot of the time with games, your arms are out in front of you and they're quite visible anyway. So 99.9% .9 of the time, I had no issue doing room scale with a two camera setup. One down at waist height, one up just above head height. You know, just looking in completely either side or long ways. You could see exactly what I was doing without any problems. So if you have just got one of these and you've got the stock two camera setup, don't be afraid to go room scale. Don't think you've just got to have them in front of you like it tells you in the instructions and just be facing it the whole time. Because obviously if you do that, the moment you turn around, it can't see your hands anymore and you'll lose tracking. So don't be afraid to set up an end to end configuration, one up high, one down low, um, and give that a go. For me, it worked flawlessly, almost flawlessly. You know, it was more than playable like that. I didn't have enough issues to worry. And when I added the third camera in, you know, I've had no issues at all, both in the ceiling mounted configuration and as it is now. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. When you go through the setup in the Oculus software, it warns you that your cameras are too far apart. You just have to choose ignore um, because it recommends no more than two meters apart. I think mine is probably, probably about three meters, maybe if we do a little, a very rough one, two, three. Okay, maybe three and a half meters um, or yards apart in that in that situation and the other one back there in that corner is probably a similar distance so when you set it up it'll warn you they're too far apart just choose to ignore that and it gives you a little warning about you might not get proper tracking ignore that and carry on and it works just fine um, but i think that's about everything i wanted to go through today what we're we up to 12 30 minutes i think i've waffled on long enough about this any questions as always put them in the comments I will put some links, eBay and Amazon, to CV1s and extra sensors if I can find any. Everything is a bit scarce at the moment. People are going balls deep with their gaming and their VR and their sim racing um, because we're all stuck at home. Uh, oh, that's a good point, actually, from a sim racing point of view. You know, um, you can pretty much put the cameras where you want because you just sat there in your sim racing rig and the only thing that's being tracked is your head. So from a sim racing point of view, you know, none of this makes too much of a difference. But I'm sure those of you that have VR, you don't just sim race. You, how, can you, how can you not be tempted to step into a, a virtual world, you know, when you're running around shooting and jumping and flying and doing all these other things that we can do as well? You know, it's so much fun. If you haven't tried it, you really, really should. There's some great experiences out there. And even now, after having VR for quite some time, I'm still always wowed by the effect when I first step into whatever it is I'm going to play. You know, Half-Life Alex at the moment was my newest game. And it's just, you know, that blew me away. The detail in there was incredible. Um, it's funny, actually, the very start of the game, you're in a little room and there's a glass window and there's a load of, like, um, not permanent marker pens, but those coloured marker pens. First thing I did was draw a penis on the glass window. And it's so funny because it literally feels like you're there holding this you know, uh, felt tip pen or marker pen drawing away on, on glass just like in real life. It was really strange. It was so good, in fact, that I got my missus, I said, Kate, you've got to try this. And just, she was in there drawing, you know, heart shapes and, and, and cheesy things like that. But anyway, that's enough waffle about Half-Life, Alex. It's a good game. But uh, yeah, so now you know how to set up your, your sensors around the room. You know, you don't have to go ceiling height with all that extra length of cable. If you don't want to, they work just fine in this configuration, which looks pretty neat and tidy as well, in my opinion. They don't stand out as much, just tucked away on top of you know things around the room. But anyway, as always, thanks very much for watching. I hope you all have a good day and take it easy.